Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining SBC Leaders Podcast. I'm Kelly Keane, Global Relationship Director for SBC. SBC Leaders is a membership of preeminent operators and operator associations formed to provide a forum for their leadership teams in order to share ideas, promote innovation in the sector, collaborate on major issues, and work to enhance the industry's reputation. Our next guest on our podcast is John Levy, who is the founder and CEO of The Score, empowering millions of sports fans through its digital media and sports betting products. John has taken his family media business to an internationally recognized brand now listed on both the Toronto Stock Exchange and NASDAQ in the US. John has been at the helm of media and sports businesses for over three decades. In 2012, John and his team turned their focus 100% on focusing the Score's hugely popular mobile platforms, including its flagship app, The Score, one of the most popular sports apps in North America. He's got the vision, he's got the experience, and his business is well poised to take over the sports betting world globally. It is therefore my pleasure to welcome John Levy to the show. Welcome, John. Hey, Kelly. It's nice to be here. Thanks for that great introduction. I like this particular <laughs> that last part about take over the sports betting world. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's Welcome. Cool. It's my pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah. I want to start off and talk a little bit about um, where you've come and where you're going. The, the name of the company is Score Media and Gaming, which might suggest media first and gaming and sports betting second. Is that the case, giving your increased profile in the U.S. and how things are taking off over there? Um, yeah, actually, it is. I mean, you saw, Kelly sort of hit the nail on the head, and that's one of the prime differentiators between us and everybody else that sort of gravitated towards the, the gaming space, you know, particularly as of late where it's been so hot. Um, you know, what, with us, it's more been this evolution. You know, it's been this path for the last, oh, my God, um, going back almost forever. Even the old cable days led to television and television led to digital and digital led to, to sports betting. But it's, 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 it's always sort of been this continuum. There was never really a cutoff date, even though there were lots of big events along the way. It was, it was, um, there was really this sort of fundamental sort of inner something that, that, that drove us towards this. And, uh, you know, in the in the current state, you're right. It's media first, and and that's one of the prime differentiators of us versus the other guys because, you know, we're just treating sports betting as a part of why people are passionate about sports. Quite frankly, it's not this big to do that's brand new or that just surfaced. People have been betting on sports for time and eternity, and um, that's how we treat it. And it's really just one of the aspects of why people love sports. So our media company, the digital media company, will always be the leader. It'll be the core of the ecosystem um, and betting will be a part of that. And it's it, that's kind of one of the main differentiators of how we're approaching the market as compared to everybody else. That's great. Um, I know that, uh, you know, as in my intro and what, what you've just said now, that you've you've been around and you have a vision, right? And your vision into mobile. Um, I want to talk a bit about your vision into mobile and the scores mobile app. Great. I think I read it's the second most popular sports mobile app in America. Yeah. Um, and I know that you and the team went all in on mobile almost 10 years ago when I'm not sure I had any sort of sports apps on my phone back then. Uh, where did that foresight come from and what advantage is mobile first media going to give you? Well, where, let's start with where it came from first, because where it really came from was, um, you know, good to be, you know, good to be lucky, lucky to be good. We know we think we're smart. <laughs> maybe you're smart. Maybe you're not smart. I hope we're smart. I think we're smart. But the reality <laughs> is, um, the, you know, the reality is when we had the TV network, which we started in the mid 90s in Canada, it was a different type of sports broadcast entity. It was data on a screen. There was a ticker on the bottom that had the odds on it that never went away. It was a more open and authentic approach to sports, right? And our hosts didn't wear shirt and tie. They weren't buttoned down stiffs like the other networks, like, you know, ESPN in the States or our version of that in Canada, <laughs> which was TSN, right? Our guys were like guys you went to the bar with, you went drinking with, right? So mm -hmm. when they were covering a game, when they're on the desk and they're covering a game and some but he kicks a field goal that takes it over a 14 or 18 point spread in the last minute of the game. And it really didn't matter to the outcome of the game, but it did matter to the spread. 
you know, the other networks would straighten themselves up and they'd say, oh, I'm sure that's interesting to certain people. Our guys would be ripping their freaking hair out because they just blew a $25, $50 bet, right? And it was that openness and authenticity that, that we, how we built the brand and what, what resonated with this younger audience. And in, in answer to your question about how we got into mobile was that younger audience who was starting to consume content, not just sports content, but all content, we're moving into mobile technology. And we had engineers because our TV network didn't look like any other TV network in the first place. So we had engineers. So basically what we did, we followed the audience, you know, into, you know, mobile land. And mm -hmm. our first app, mobile land, kind of weird, but into mobile technology. And yeah. our first app was actually on and Kelly, I don't want to date anybody on the call, but it was the Razor flip phone. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, that was what we had our first sports app on. And, uh, um, you know, then um, a little company called, you know, called BlackBerry shows up down the road in Canada with this really sophisticated device called a BlackBerry, which everybody in the States went crazy about because it was a protected and a more sophisticated mm -hmm. piece of mobile equipment. So we ported it to BlackBerry and then iOS shows up and Android shows up. So, you know, we were early in the game. We understood that's where the audience was. That's how they were starting to consume sports content and other content. And, you know, we just decided, let's, let's follow them. Let's serve it up. And, you know, we, so we were in the game early and we had, you know, product people and engineers that were doing it great. We scored high in, in, in Google play and in, in the app store. And we knew we'd kick butt in Canada because we were the cool sports network. Right. Mm -hmm. But what we didn't anticipate was we we're going to get all these freaking downloads coming out of the States. And yeah. they were coming because it was good and because it was scored high. And that's where yeah. people were starting to consume. Stuff. So, you know, like you said, we became the second or third, depending on what day of the week it is, most popular app in North America. So, you know, we really, you know, so we kind of knew we were onto something anyway, but now we knew we were onto something that was bigger than just what we were doing in Canada. This had really international uh, opportunities for us and a yeah. resonance with a bigger audience. So, Quite frankly, that gave yeah. us the that gave us the uh, guts that when next time somebody came around to buy the TV network, we said, "Okay, if you make if you hit the price, um, we'll do the deal." And we were lucky. Here's another one of these good to be lucky, lucky to be good because it was Rogers. So yeah, because it was Rogers, they don't care about any brand other than Rogers. So we got to keep the brand, which was the score, yeah. which is a great name, and we got to keep all the digital because they were still focused on the legacy asset. Yeah. So that's the story. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that because I'm not sure everyone listening will know about Rogers, but it is the, dare I say, monopoly in Canada when it comes to broadcast. What was it like to go up against when you were thinking mobile and thinking digital and all these things to sort of swim upstream, basically, when everyone else was telling you we're doing something else, right? What kind of, what kind of chutzpah do you have to have in order to sort of get that done? You know what? It was... Um... It, it, you know, it seems, it seems like, oh my God, how could you do that? And how smart are you guys? And whoa, how, you know, and it, again, I don't want to downplay that it was a pretty great move because it was for, for us and for the team and to be able to execute and recognize it. But again, I keep coming back to the fact that it's just who we were. It is, you know. You know, even in the old cable days, and we didn't talk about that, you know, we were, yeah. one, my dad was one of the first guys in cable television in Canada in the yeah. 50s, 50, 80, wow. started the company in Hamilton, just outside of Toronto, wow. and Caster and Dundas and all that. Yeah. And it, 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 it was a licensed area, but the, the way you treated the customer was different. I mean, Rogers had a system downtown, other cable companies had, were surrounding us, Kojiko, all the, but we treated our customers differently and we listened to them and we said, you know, if you're going to have a call at two o'clock, be there at two o'clock. Don't make them wait all afternoon for an appointment, right? Yeah. So it was more of this respect about how to deal with people and their, and that, floated into sort of our TV days and that floated into the mobile space. So, um, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I think it's really just a different way of, of looking at how to do business. And, mm. and I guess the, the other main thing too was, and the hard thing was when we sold the TV asset, remember we started that from scratch in that competitive environment up that was competitive. You know, we were up against mm. TSN, Sportsnet, all the biggies with this little silly television network that was nipping away at their heels, you know, you know, pissing them off. <laughs> 
because <laughs> it was it was it was touching an audience that they couldn't mm -hmm. get to. Um, and, and it, you know, it just, it just sort of worked. Right. And, 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 and that was kind of the driving force that said, and, and quite frankly, we're, we'll, we'll get to it in a second, but it's the same, it's the same thinking that we're applying in the betting space because, yeah. you know, this whole landscape is so ripe for disruption. Um, mm -hmm. you know, TV was, you know, broadcasting was sports is, um, print is look what we're doing a yeah. uh, podcast where the hell these things come from you know what i mean yeah. like like it it's everything is upside down and you know yeah. when we sold the tv asset it, it, we loved it and it was cool but until we became 100 percent mobile you really couldn't appreciate what you had to do in that space so you know that that you know really gave us the clarity to be able to just focus on that one sort of element, that one type of offering, that one type of technology. And um, mm -hmm. I think that's why it works. Yeah. What a privilege to be with your customers all the time, because we know how, how often we use our smartphones these days. So that's great. Um, well, exciting times lie ahead, obviously, and I can hear the passion in your voice. Um, there's the long awaited legislation to legalize single event sports betting in Canada is finally happening. Um, how will the score engage with those customers that have become accustomed maybe with some offshore operators? So, um, same business, right? I mean, yeah. we're, we're up and operating in the States, how, you know, Canadian yeah. company, yeah. You know, um, we're in four States in the U S uh, one nice. of the other differentiators for us is we really do try to build the whole tech stack on our own, which comes from our history of building the mobile app, right? So yeah. if, you, if you wanna be able to, to serve it up the way you wanna serve it up, it's really hard to rely on third parties to do it for you, even though that's how we started in the in the, in the the sports betting space, because yeah. um, we had to get there early, but it was done in such a way that we could migrate and, and, and uh, yeah. build more and more on our own, um, you know, and, and always knew a big percentage of our users, whether in the US or in Canada, love to bet on sports. But we always, Kelly said, no, we're going to stay clean. We're not going to go mm -hmm. into the gray market that you said, because eventually yeah. we hoped and prayed this thing was going to open up. Paspa fell in the States. Bingo, yeah. bango, off we went. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, still waiting for Canada to have its moment. And you're right. I think we're getting really close. Um, yeah. You probably are aware that it's passed through the House. It's now into the Senate. Um, it's had first reading in the Senate, just waiting for day by day for um, yeah. approval of second reading in the Senate, which which means that it goes to committee. Um, huge biparty support up here. Um, you know, same same sort of evolution that happened in the states. You know, it wasn't so long mm -hmm. ago you couldn't talk to any of the pro leagues and they'd sort of poo hoo sports betting. Oh, you can't do yeah. that. Stuff, you yeah. know, that's the, the integrity issues. Oh, come on, yeah. issues, nonsense. It was, yeah. you know, it was trying to figure out how everybody could participate was the real question. Yeah, and get their cut. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's lots, of, right? And there's lots of issues too. There's data. There's everything. You know, there's lots of hmm. there's lots of things that have to be sorted out. But um, um, and they are. And so everybody's supporting this thing in Canada. And you know, it's you know. In Canada, it, it's it's really sort of set up the same way as in the U.S., quite frankly. The, there is a little provision in the criminal code which prevents single event wagering, which you were aware of. You did your homework mm -hmm. on, which is this 200-year-old provision in the criminal code, yep. which prevents people from betting on a game. Everything else you can do, but you can't do that. And who does who uh, who legislates that and regulates that are the provinces. So yeah. um, the, the feds are getting close to removing this one provision, and the provinces have been working to to open this thing up for the better part of a year, year and a half now. And we've been part of that yeah. consultative process. And Ontario has really taken the lead, and it's really exciting for us for a whole bunch of reasons. Number one. Uh, Ontario is the equivalent of the fifth largest state in the U.S. Yeah. Huge. Okay. So we're all jonesing for New York, Florida, California, yeah. Texas, all the biggies in the U.S. And we're lobbying and working and we got all our guys out there trying to do access deals and we're getting them right. We're over time. We're We're getting them. But, you know, then this thing shows up up here and it's huge and it probably is going to be licensed before most of the big ones in the U in the U.S. Yeah. And so that's really exciting. And, you know, the, the not to talk a lot of numbers because we're not talking a lot of numbers today, but, you know, 
Ontario alone is like 1.5 to 2.2 billion dollars in in sort yeah. of wagering revenue, right? Yeah. And that's about 40% of all of Canada and the rest of the provinces are going to come in line as well. So, exciting cuz it's a huge market, right? It a, is, yeah. B, it's our home turf. It you know, yeah. like in the states we're nipping away at everybody. Our brand is now starting to get recognized. Yeah, um, you know, we did the NASDAQ listing. So it's being recognized mm -hmm. both in the community and with betters and now with the financial community. In Canada, apropos of the history we talked about, yeah. it's us. It's us. You know, the digital landscape in Canada, you know, if you add up, you know, the other two biggies, uh, Rogers mm -hmm. and the TSN mm -hmm. and put them together, we're still bigger than them. Um, you know, uh, uh, DraftKings in Canada, yeah. like we're 10 times the size of them in the digital landscape. So, you know, really, this is our home turf. And you're right. There is the gray market that we're going to deal with. Mm -hmm. And the government here, when they legislate, it's going to be open. And they're probably going to let those guys in to be to be yeah. licensed, just like the rest of us. Yeah. But we're not afraid of competing with those guys when we are have the relationship with the consumer. We've got the brand and yeah. the loyalty. So... Um, listen, I, we're not sitting on the mountain being arrogant yeah. schmucks, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we, we respect the position we're in, we respect the relationship we have with our customers and, um, we're, 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 we're going to do it in a way that they aren't going to be able to do it. And that gets back to this infusion of betting into the media app, into the landscape, just make it available. Yeah. And yeah, uh, we think it's a winning combination. Well, good. That's very exciting. We'll keep our eyes open for that one. We switch gears a little bit, okay. talk about family. Okay. I know that family is quite important to you, um, and that's reflecting in your working life as well. I know your son Benji's the president and CEO of The Score, um, and has followed closely in your footsteps. You talked about your father um, also um, leading a media business. Yeah. Um, I Correct me, but I think your son Noah oversees product and Aubrey works on the marketing team. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. It's like, yeah, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Good. What's yeah. that like? Um, and I, I want to know sort of what you maybe have imparted onto them about leadership and then also maybe what you're learning from them as you work together on a daily basis. You know, first of all, I, I, I feel like you should pinch me or I should pinch myself. Or should say. <laughs> because, sorry, because um, I, I'm really so fortunate in, in that, um, you know, this, first of all, that this opportunity is here. Secondly, that my kids have chosen because it was their mm -hmm. choice to come in. Yeah. You know, there was not this, you know, you know, you, nice. you shall be part of this yeah. family business. That wasn't the way it happened. It was uh, with Benji. He's been over 20 years now with me and he's my first son. And uh, um, it was just natural. He tried something else at first. He was in the banking business, was way too smart for that. He hated it. And then came in just at a time when the TV business was, the, t the TV asset was starting to grow. And, and it, you know, it's, it, it was an easy transition for him um, uh, and for me because he's much smarter than I am. And <laughs> he, he, we have different talents, really. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it, it was very fortunate. And, uh, and, 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 you know, and then my other two guys, I have a daughter, was I have another son, Aubrey, who was my second son, who, uh, was, went to the U.S. school. He went to Michigan um, and, and was more in the theater arts. And he ended up in New York and he was doing all sorts of things and then decided to go back to school. And he got his uh, MBA at Columbia and came out and did worked for HBO totally on his own for a couple, a couple yeah. of years. And then, you know, things were starting to fly again from a, a marketing and, and new biz dev um, opportunity. So he it was just a natural time for him to come in. And then. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a daughter who snuck in in the middle there in the third child who didn't want to come in to do stuff, but was running her own amazing business and the uh, fashion fashion business. And then my youngest son, Noah, who also went to school in the States, went to school in Texas, um, came out, did some digital projects. He also went back to school and got his MBA at Columbia and then did other did other digital projects. And that yeah. came in just as sort of a couple of years ago as this whole idea of you know, opening up the sports betting platform, integrating it yeah. into the media platform and his sort of direction was in that area. So not only do I have them working with me, but they're in their own channels, right? I mean, yeah. well, these channels, everything, but the other two guys are, are working where their passion is, is, is there. And I, and the only other thing I'd say about, about them and the family business, it's obvious because they're my kids, but 
it's kind of the way we've treated the whole business in the first place. It, it's, it's, you know, if you ask anybody who works in the company, it's, um, um, you know, it, it is a family business and people mm -hmm. are treated that way. I mean, listen, you have to mm -hmm. have a hierarchy and there's got to be rules mm -hmm. and, and people have, you know, got to be able to sort of progress throughout the organization and stuff like that. And they do, but sort of the open, the openness and the conflict that you see in a family yeah. is not all just, hi, Rosie, everything is fine. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've got humdinger arguments going on all the time, <laughs> as you would imagine in a family. And that's healthy. Yeah. And the same thing is in the business because people are allowed yeah. to express their opinions. And, yeah. you know, um, and, and that's where a lot of the great creativity comes from. Because, yeah. you, you know, you don't, the, the hidden talent in each employee that you have is far greater than the area that they work in. And, and if you leave it in a sort of an open environment and allow people to, to not be afraid to communicate with one another or to me or to other, any, anybody else in the senior management role, it's amazing yeah. what happens. It's amazing. So it's a family business through and through, I guess that's the yeah. point. Yeah. And what, what do you hope to impart on them in terms of leadership? Well, that's, that's also a really good question because, you know, um, uh, you learn by example, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I learned from my dad, hopefully they're learning from me and hopefully they're learning from each other because yeah. it's, 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 and from everybody else that they're working with. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's some core elements, you know, the, the prime one I think is the respect for the people you work with. I think that's mm -hmm. the biggest and yeah. I, you know, and, um, you know, let, let, uh, you know, the best way to, to allow them to, produce the most that they can and elevate as high as they can is to encourage, encourage that and not put blocks mm. around them and create that open environment that allows, allows people to think differently. I mean, our whole business is about thinking differently. The mm -hmm. reason that we're successful is because we haven't thought like everybody else. The reason we're going to be successful in the betting business is because we're not doing it like everybody else. We're mm -hmm. not just thinking about, you know, how to take this, the, our, our, short term immediate share market shares today it's how do you build this thing for the future and 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 how do you make it sustainable and how do you make it relevant not just for your share i mean listen we're working for our shareholders every day of the week but you can't yeah. let fluctuations uh, you know on a minute by minute basis and trust me i do watch and you know i love it when it's going one way and i'm not so happy when it's going the other but you can't let that influence the longer term right and you you got to put yourself in position and and have the capital to be able to do it yeah yeah i agree so you mentioned shareholders and you recently went uh public ipo on the nasdaq can you tell me besides that a moment or two that it's defined your career overall um, that was a pretty big one. That was a good one. Um, <laughs> I, I must say, um, I like to talk, I, I, you know, it's a, it's a terrible expression, but it's kind of like we, you know, that was the point at which we sort of put our big boy pants on in the context yeah. of the markets. Right. And listen, we've been listed in Canada for quite some time and been very successful with that. And, uh, been a access to been able to access the capital markets in Canada um, in little bites as, as we've needed them and as we've grown. Uh, but we've always known that, you know, for us to, to be able to compete, not from a product standpoint or a thinking standpoint, but from a capital standpoint, you got to mm. get access to the, you know, to the, to the, to mm. the bigger market. You, you have to have the bigger institutional, uh, uh, investors with you. You have to make it available to the bigger retail market. Um, and we needed, you know, a bigger chunk of capital to be able to uh, get into all these new markets that are expanding faster than even we anticipated. And, and, and you know, we were more aggressive than most. So, um, you know, that that was a big step. But there's, oh, oh my God, how, what are the big steps? Selling the TV asset, that was a big moment and becoming strictly mobile. Um, you know, we've had some humdingers on the other side on the, you know, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. But I mean, you <laughs> yeah. know. Those, those are good ones to talk about and probably more important than the successes, to be quite honest, because, you know, they, they really teach, you know, the successes are great. And then, but the way we are, you, you, you it's like, I, you're, you're like, okay, so I did that one. What's the next one? What's the next one? That's what sort of drives you. But the, the, the zingers, the painful experiences, yeah. they tend to stay with you a little bit longer and they tend to teach you more um, about how to avoid. And, 
you know, we, we've had some really good ones and, um, but that makes you more resilient. And, mm. you know, that's important for the, for the people who work with you. And you talk about what the family to see those things, because that's how you figure out how you get through them and on to the next. Yeah, that's life. That's what I'm trying to teach my five-year-old at the moment. <laughs> exactly. It is life. Um, yeah. Um, have you any surprises being sort of at the helm, being CEO? Is, what surprised you the most about being a CEO? Um, I don't know. I think I think that there's really... Um, um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's I. It's, it's everything. It's, it's really Kelly. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm stumbling here because it's it's almost um, um, it's 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 almost the same as the life lessons that you're talking about with your, yeah. with your daughter. I mean, it's there's the certain fundamental things that are consistent with being a CEO or being a parent or being yeah. a friend or a spouse. And um, um, you know, I, I, it, at the end of the day, it all do, you know it does all do, boil down to people and your relationship mm. with people. I mean, yeah, plain and simple. And whether whether you're pitching an idea, whether you're convincing big, you know, um, investors that this is the idea of the future, um, or or this is the path that we should all be on, um, you know, I I, th I think it's core fundamental life stuff. Like you got to believe in what you're doing. You got to have passion for what you're doing. You got to have respect for the employees that you're dealing with. Um, don't take anything for granted because stuff turns on a dime and you better be prepared for that because when it smacks you up inside the head, you, you got to sort of take that punch and, and get up and say, okay, now do I want to stay down or do I have another approach to this thing? And, and those are the lessons that you learn in life. And it's the same as a CEO and, and, you know, and listen, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. You know, certain people don't want that responsibility and they don't want that liability. They don't, uh, um, and they're more comfortable working within more closed and that's, that's fine too. But, um, yeah. it, you, you got to pick your spots and, and, and it's, it's, uh, I don't think just because they put the title on you, all of a sudden you wake up one day and say, okay, so this is what it's like. If you didn't know before you got there, you're in big doo-doo. You know, mm. if, if you don't know what that's supposed to be like before somebody slaps the title on you, then yeah. you're probably not going to have that title for very long. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I think what continues to surprise me having these chats, I ask that question to all of my guests. Yes. Is that uh, you're just people. You know, and and we all have life experiences, so that continues to surprise. You know, I think at one point I was going to be surprised. I thought I was going to be surprised, um, but it's nice to know that we all have similar experiences and, yeah. and a take on that. Similar experiences, similar faults, similar fears. I mean, you know, yeah. a lot of CEO, like you know, yeah, a lot of them can sort of come on camera and put on a good yeah. face, and then they go off and they're puking their guts out, right? So, I hope it, not. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not saying. I, hope not. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean because of the interview, Kelly. Yeah. I didn't mean because of you. Okay. I, meant, I meant just in terms of, you know, in terms of, um, you know, they think that they have to have this sort of facade, and then, yeah. and then when they relax, they're a different person. I, yeah, it tends not to work, and and you know, you got to be who you are because uh, people will see through that. So, yeah, I agree. Great. Um, well, we're nearing the end, um, but I want to ask you one final question, if that's yep. okay. You recently uh, told CNBC that one of the secrets of your success was to build it slow, but it certainly seems from my perspective that things are moving pretty quickly. Um, what can we expect to see next from you in the score? So that's one of the statements that I really regret ever saying, to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> because it really doesn't represent it really doesn't say what I was trying to say. I, I, I was trying to say, don't get caught up in all the hype, right? Okay. You know, yeah. That's kind of what I meant. And, you know, uh, build it well is, is kind of build it properly. And, and, yeah. and that obviously usually takes more time than just rushing to market with the first product that you can, that you see. So I guess yeah. it is slow, but, uh, you know, I, I, I hate the word because nothing you are a hundred percent, right. Nothing we've ever done is slow. Uh, and if yeah. my, if my engineers ever heard me and product people ever, I'm on them every minute saying, okay, so this will be ready when, yeah. and when's the next, you know, when, when, when the yeah. next thing on the roadmap, that'll be ready. What a month after that, or so, exactly. so, um, 
so what's to come? What's to come? And you're right. Things are moving very quickly. Um, and, and I, uh, you know, if I really knew that would be that famous crystal ball. And then, you know, I could tell you and me and we could just do it and retire tomorrow <laughs> because that's good be way ahead of everybody. Um, and I don't know if I want to retire tomorrow anyway, and you probably don't either, but that's, that's another story. But I, I think, I think there's a, other than what's immediately obvious in terms of this amazing opportunity in sports betting and sports betting mm -hmm. acting as a catalyst for how people are consuming sports and how teams and leagues and broad and all these people are starting to think about, um, you know, how they join up and merge all these mega deals that you see in the marketplace, mm -hmm. Kelly, that are, are trying to take advantage of this because they don't have both components. We're in a bit of a fortunate position because, as I said, we're media and gaming and we're all fused together. So I don't have to go find a media partner. I don't have to go find you know, betting partners. We're sort of this whole ecosystem and we got to build this thing uh, well, not slowly, well. So, uh, but I do think there are things in the immediate horizon that are really about to change in terms of the whole, uh, again, leading with how people are consuming sports content. You know, people are not watching television the same way we used to. Cord cutting is not a maybe, it is a fact. It's a huge fact. And what's replacing it, which is this over the top stuff. And, and I'm not sure that's the answer to be quite honest, because now there's 10 over the top networks. They're all mm. just flooding in. They're all they're duplicating the same stuff, only in a different platform. Now it's in a mobile or a digital platform or a laptop. Uh, I don't, you know, you know, I, I, I think there's a bigger round of disruption coming in how people are consuming content and sports content, particularly. So um, that's, I think, where that puck, that infamous puck is going, not where it is. And I think mm -hmm. I think that there's going to be lots of opportunities there when you start to think differently and, and just mm -hmm. do what we did right from the get go, which is just watch the bloody consumers, you know, and don't yeah. watch them if they're older. Watch the younger ones, yeah. watch the <laughs> teenagers or even younger than teenagers. What are they doing? How are they consuming it? What's their attention span? What are they yeah. interested in? Can they sit at a game for three hours? I don't think so. Are they, if they are going to go to a game, are they going to be sitting there? just watching the game. I don't think so. Are they going to be in entertained just by what's on the board? I don't think so. I don't know what the answer yeah. is, but I think I got an idea that 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 we don't know. So I think right. there's huge opportunity if you just get up, turn around and then sit down again and say, OK, I'm going to think like the consumer's thinking and I'm going to, and you know, I. I'm looking, I'm struggling to find where my phone is. I don't know where it is. I probably threw it away. Because <laughs> I'm going to do this little thing with, because this will never go away. And yeah, yeah. pretend I got my iPhone in my hand. Yeah, got and it. It, it, it's, it, you know, maybe it's going to be implanted in here at some point. So I don't even yeah. have to hold the damn thing. But um, it's going to be, it's going to be very personalized, very individual. And you better align yourself with that person because that's yeah. all that matters. Well, that's great. All right. So we'll change it from build it slow to forget the hype. <laughs> However, I'm going to find it very hard to forget the hype because you've hyped me up a lot, John. Thank you for that. Thank you for oh, your energy. Great. And my sincerest thanks for giving us the opportunity to learn more about sort of where you've come from, what you're building and your take on leadership. Thank you very much. Awesome. It's been a lot of fun, Kelly. Thank you. No problem. This has been the sixth episode of SBC Leaders Podcast. I'm Kelly Keene, Global Relationship Director for SBC. You can subscribe to this series on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, or watch us direct on gamblingtv.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.